Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. And uh, I'm going to get into one of the things I think are, by far and away, the most interesting of story developments that I've seen lately. Um, but I do want to mention, I'd seen this at Prison Planet, I think it was Michael Snyder wrote it. I was reading it to Christelle before going live. Um, there are, or there were, four so far, and we are looking at uh, 4.30 in the morning, 11 2013. Four million people to date, give or take, have lost their insurance, health insurance, because of Obamacare, because of its regulations. 100,000 people, give or take, has signed up. That means that since the Affordable Care Act has come along to make sure that everyone is insured, 3.9 million people have lost their health insurance since October the 1st. Thanks, Obama. Uh, I'm, thank God I still have mine. I, every, every time I get any correspondence from them at all, I shudder. Um, I have really good insurance, actually. And it's not that expensive. But you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about what is the most awesome story that Sam said he was going to lead off with. Guys, I've been perplexed by this. I'm going to go ahead and let this run behind me. This is the two slits experiment that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. Because I'm going to let other people describe it. You know, obviously, uh, physicists and that will do a better job than me. But I've been following this since day one. Basically what it is, is, they, again, you going to have to understand the two slits experiment. It explains it. But in a nutshell, it is, uh, if you send a stream of photons through a slit, it will, of course, make a line on the wall where the slits were, where the, the electrons hit. If you put it in two slits, what would you have? You would have lines on this side and lines on that one, right? Two slits? No, you don't. When you have two, you end up with a streaming effect like this going out like a rock hitting in the middle of water <clears throat> and that forms what is called a grid or what's all that mean Sam you're boring me to tears and I'm going to log off your show don't do so that means that the only time things have matter the only time things are not anything is when they are being observed all right, well, if I shut all the lights off in this studio, and D-like knows I kick the right thing at least once a year, um, so it could happen. And I take my head and I ram it against this computer screen, <clears throat> even though there's nobody watching it, it's going to hit. That would imply that there is some kind of being over us. Do I think it's God? Yes. Do you? Maybe not. There is some being way above us that is, in fact, forming matter by seeing it. Now, it gets a lot simpler from there, but let's face it, that would describe a number of things. That would explain how uh, God created the all of the everything. If this is a simulation, if this is a hologram, a video game, like Sims, if you will. But I mean, we're talking God. We're not talking about somebody sitting at the remote controller. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read about some of the proof because it looks like more and more and more we are finding uh, not only is the creation theory proving to be a damn near creation fact at this point, and I'm talking scientifically, I'm not talking religiously, but it's looking like matter is not what we think it is. Listen to this. This is from the telegraph.co.uk. Not the Tinfoil Hat Society, and not the, uh, the, the Christians Who Went Obama Abortion Clinic Society. This is the telegraph.co.uk. The Telegraph, the major paper for those of you that don't know. Lucy Kinder, or Kinder, writes, If you believe the Matrix franchise, what we think of in our everyday life is in fact a simulation generated by an all-powerful computer. However, <coughs> This idea may not simply be science fiction, and the cosmic rays could reveal that we are indeed living in a simulated universe. And this is another way of uh, proving it beyond uh, this. According to the Discover magazine, physicists can offer us the ability to test whether we live in our own virtual matrix by studying radiation from space. Cosmic rays are the fastest particles that exist and originate in far-flung galaxies. 
They always arrive at Earth with a specific maximum energy of 10 to the 20 electron volts. If there is a specific maximum energy for particles, then this gives rise to the idea that energy levels are defined specific and constrained by an outside, outside force. Thus, according to the research, if the energy levels of particles could be simulated, so too could the rest of the universe. The cosmic ray test was developed by Silas Bean, a nuclear physicist at the University of Washington, and involved scientists building a simulation of space using a lattice or grid. It says that they calculated that the energy of particles within the simulation is related to the distance between the points of the lattice and that the smaller the lattice, the greater the energy that the particles can have. There have been many efforts to discover the truth about the universe and whether it is a simulated reality. Uh, and then somebody else uh, says later on, let me see where this is, uh, uh, Bean has a warning. He said that the simulators who control our universe may well be simulations themselves, a dream within a dream type effect, which could render the entire scientific study meaningless. Uh, somebody else said that he didn't think, uh, let me find this exact quote too, there were really interesting points in this. Um, I tend to think that if this is a simulation, I think all of it is one simulation. And I think, you know, that's probably what all the planets you see peppered all over the place are. They're probably varying degrees of the same simulation, in my uh, opinion. And again, it's, it's looking like science is backing this up quite a bit. It's not my thought. I have never thought of it. This isn't something that came out of my head. Um, it says, if they think the world is a simulation, then why do they think the superminds, who are outside the simulation, would be constrained by the same sorts of thoughts and methods that we have? Saying that since we have the grid, why would they also use the grid? Why would they? Maybe they do not look at things the way that we do. Maybe they have created the way that we look at things. Uh, I don't really understand, uh, this is uh, Peter Milliken who said this from Oxford. I don't understand what his point is here. I think that the superminds do not uh, think uh, as, as we do. I don't think it's, they're constrained by the sorts of thoughts and methods that we are. I think they are the constraining force in the thoughts and methods that we have. Um, I've heard some people postulate that it's our future selves doing this. All I know is this. We are proving more and more and more that we did not evolve as the evolutionists would like us to believe. We simply didn't. Uh, I've said it time and time again. There is a plethora of scientific proof that proves that man does in fact, and nature does in fact, uh, adapt, which would be uh, uh, microevolution. I believe in it. Uh, example? In the days before the, uh, before the Industrial Revolution, that won't go down well. In the days before the Industrial Revolution, they had, of course, you know, no pollution in the air, none of that. And we had uh, white moths. And these moths were always white. Well, they became peppered when the uh, pollution in the air had turned the colors of the leaves. It changed the, uh, the actual look of the butter, of the moth. The pepper moth did not used to be peppered. It evolved. But it did not jump species. It did not become a fish, which is what the uh, lunatic fringe uh, of the uh, um, envi um, environmentalists, of the uh, evolutionists believe. That fish became this, that became lunacy. Things do not jump species. And uh, this universe is a simulation. It answers a lot of questions. Uh, it explains, uh, you know, well, how could there be a hell if there's no light but never-ending pain? If everything's a simulation, you can simulate just about anything. Um, it explains, you know, how the universe was made. It explains a lot of things that before have been left to explanations involving pure chance, things coming from nothing, which Stephen Hawking believes, and fish turning into people. So, I mean, this isn't as crazy as a fish turning into a person. Guys, I spent some time on that story because I love it. Um, I really, I can't get enough of that. And whenever I get news on it, it will be here. It's like Fukushima. I, I will be reporting on that all the time. Uh, for those of you that think, oh my God, that's the most boring stuff I've ever heard. Well, we're back to the, the normal insanity that we see every day all around us that is far more insane than anything, even on the evolution front. This is from the New American, Alex Newman. 
At the UN summit, poorer regimes demand trillions in climate loot. Basically, the fact that man is not playing any part in climate change is starting to make it very difficult for the UN to con continue taking money from rich nations and giving it to poor nations to b combat climate change. And this matters to you watching this because it is your tax dollars that is going there. They are paying, they are using the money you pay in your taxes to send it to other countries in the name of global warming. The other thing is if you are not paying taxes and you're living off the government dole, well maybe the dole would be a bit higher if we weren't paying other nations for the lie of global warming. Man-made global warming is a lie. Put a house beat behind it. With United Nations theories about alleged man-made global warming imploding on the world stage, regimes oppressing populations in poorer nations are demanding that taxpayers in wealthier countries start promptly handing over trillions of dollars supposedly to deal with climate change. It's for the planet. Gathered in Warsaw, Poland at the latest UN climate summit and facing massive, pu massive public protest against the extortion effort, there's a link to that, governments are hoping to quickly and quietly lay the foundations for a new global treaty rationing carbon dioxide. Multiple nations and populations are becoming increasingly suspicious as the UN's discredited theories are ridiculed by top scientists and experts worldwide. So climate dignitaries would grow. They know that they must act fast. Indeed, if what countless scientists refer to as glo the global warming scam crumbles entirely before 2015, the effort to foist a planetary carbon budget on humanity to replace the Kyoto Protocol may be doomed. The hundreds of billions spent on climate schemes every year would inevitably start drying up and bankrupting countless special interests that depend on global warming, alarmism, and hysteria. This is the best article I've read in a month. Already, the new Australian government has, it says, vowed to reject UN socialism masquerading as environmentalism. Yes, Australia! They've been going nuts with mining uranium and every kind of stupid that communist, fascist-leaning implementation they can do. It is good to see Australia doing this. Listen, this is how you stand up against this BS. This is how you stand up against the UN. The Australian government has vowed to reject UN socialism masquerading as environmental, ex, environmentalism. That is a direct quote. And it works to dismantle widely unpopular carbon taxes and climate, and climate machinations imposed under Labour Party rule. It also vowed not to adopt, adopt any more taxes or spend any more taxpayer funds on UF, UN wealth redistribution schemes orchestrated under the bogus guise of fighting discredited notions of man-made global warming. God bless every word of that. Of course, alarmists are throwing a temper tantrum, but around the world and among Australians, the new conservative-leaning coalition has been hailed for its bold stance against the hysteria. Hopefully they'll leave the UN like the US should. Analysts even say that Australia is leading the way back to sanity. I would say so too. And this was also wonderful news for those of you that follow the Fukushima disaster, as I do. Japanese authorities, meanwhile, <clears throat> recently announced that instead of working to drastically cut carbon dioxide emissions as previously promised, Japan, because they can't take another nuking, will actually be increasing its CO2 output. That is great news for all of us on the anti-nuclear front. The UN global warming theory is increasingly morph into a global laughing stock. Even Russian and Canadian officials are, rapid, are reportedly putting up some tepid resistance to the UN's grandiose climate plans. How about that? The climate hysteria movement is literally in a meltdown over the growing defections, but the wheels are quickly coming off the climate bandwagon. Yes, and that is absolutely wonderful news. And now you've got China. Listen to this. Listen to this jerk. Um, meanwhile, the communist dictatorship of China ruling over mainland China is also ramping up its demands. 
seeking at least a hundred billion dollars in climate booty per year by 2020 to be extracted from Western taxpayers. Not only is China being allowed to take all of our jobs and move them over where they get paid slave wages and then completely bankrupt the uh, middle class of the United States, now they want us to pay them a hundred billion dollars a year, much of that from the U.S., so that they can battle climate change, which isn't being caused in any way by man. I love China. It's the wonderful, scummy people. Again, the government, not the people. As Reuters reported in an article headline, Rich Nations Must Pay Up If UN Climate Toss to Succeed, China, the ruthless regime, is making threats that are similar to what uh, very poor countries, what the LDC coalition does. Uh, we pay them $100 billion a year already. And now they want more, or these nations are going to leave the UN climate uh, uh, group that they're, you know what, wonderful! I hope they all leave! I hope the U.S. says you're not getting a damn nickel because man isn't warming the planet. This is some of the best news <clears throat> I've heard all day. And I hope God shines brightly on the people in Australia that's making this happen. <clears throat> Friends, uh, courthousenews.com, this is a short one. All of you know I am against uh, illegal immigration. I think it needs to be much, much easier and cheaper to get into the country. Yes, I do. But if you are here illegally, I think you should get the hell out of the country. The same thing your country would say if we tried it. Look what happens if uh, I was to sneak into Mexico. You'd never see me again. I'd be uh, somebody's bed buddy for the next decade. Uh, so don't give me this BS. They, they don't let us do it there. But, um... This is this is wrong, and on this one, I stick up for the uh, illegal immigrants 100%. Listen to this BS. Abuse of migrants lands border agents in prison. Good. Tucson, Arizona. Two border patrol agents will spend the next two years in federal prison after forcing migrants to eat marijuana and spend the night in the desert without shoes, socks, and coats. And I would add, or munchies, which must have been miserable. U.S. District Judge Jennifer Zip sentenced suspended agents Dario Castillo and Raymond Zuniga to 24 months behind bars Tuesday. The pair also faced three years of supervised release for an incident that occurred in the desert south of Tucson, Tucson in 08. So they've been doing uh, this BS. It says, according to evidence presented by federal prosecutors at trial, Zuniga and Castillo tracked and apprehended a group of illegal border crossers carrying large backpacks containing bales of marijuana on the night of November 12th of that year. Would not have that happening if marijuana was legal like it should be. While most of the suspects fled, the agents caught four of the alleged smugglers and searched them. Zaniga found a small baggie of personal use marijuana on one detainee and proceeded to shove it into the suspect's mouth, yelling camatella, which means eat it in Spanish. Again, without any munchies at all, that must have been miserable. The agents then ordered the suspects to remove their shoes, socks, jackets, and extra shirts, leaving them thinly clothed and barefoot. You know what? Uh, they are still human beings. They do not deserve that because they broke into the country. I am against that in every way. And if that makes conservatives angry, then go ahead and be angry at me. I am against that. Um, Castillo borrowed a lighter from another agent at the scene, built a fire out of the shoes and clothing, and told the suspects to run away into the desert, prosecutors said. The four victims spent the night in the desert and were rescued the next morning by a tribal police officer. Um, what can I say? Uh, this is what scum do. This is what fascists do. And you can't find somebody that is uh, much more against illegal immigration than I am. I think it's killing our economy. However, that does not mean you go Gestapo on people. You don't just torture people for the sake of torturing people. And uh, I hope, I think I got, they got exactly what they had coming. Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. I need you to do that because when you do that, you are helping us greatly here at The Media Speaks because not only are they uh, selling some of the most unusual and awesome gifts you'll ever find, but they also support The Media Speaks, which is a wonderful win-win. And, uh, I don't know, 
I've mentioned this before. How many of you have ever gone to uh, need a flashlight, you turn your flashlight on and it doesn't go on. You're standing there in the dark with a useless cone-shaped piece of plastic. $2.99. You got that? The three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight is $2.99. Of course, it does not ever need batteries. Hand crank. Uh, compressed towels, a 12 pack, $1.99. You go on camping, they're compressed, like a little tiny, they open up into a full-size towel. They're $1.99 for 12 of them. And uh, that, that's just awesome for anybody that likes camping, those of you that live in a climate warm enough where you can still do it. And the last thing I want to get to, I mention it all the time, I'm going to keep mentioning it because I just love this. Emergency survival sleeping blanket. Alright, you're in the car, it breaks down, you're in the land of ice and snow like I am here in Ohio. For $1.99 you will be nice and toasty until the tow truck gets there. $1.99! Put it in the stocking, make someone happy, go to Bud K via the media speaks. A uh, few more stories to get to. I'm going to zip through them because I had to spend some time on the first couple. I've had a lot of stories lately that are going to be that way. I can't rush through them if you're going to get thorough coverage. And I've given you thorough coverage, but I, you can't rush. Never rush a miracle, man. You'll get rotten miracles. This is by Alpha Delta on uh, info, uh, planet.infowars.com. <clears throat> Document shows FBI ICE sets up users with child porn. I've had this sitting here since August 30th, and I have not been able to get to it, and I'm going to, because this is... Usually when a story is even half that old, it's chucked goodbye, adios. But this is so dirty for so many reasons. You're smearing innocent people and political enemies with the filth, the vileness of child pornography. You are ruining their reputations. You are making it uh, like the DUI laws. And now, if you get a DUI, everybody knows you were most likely sober. They just did it to get money. Let's face it, DUI laws are an excuse to get money. They're not about safety. Safety my ass. Uh, no one takes DUI seriously now because everybody knows it's, it's rigged. What they're going to do is make it easier for people to get away with child pornography because everybody's going to know that the government is planting this on people's computers because they don't like them. They tried it with um, uh, Luke Radowski. Look up Luke Radowski child porn. I have a document I wish to share with the American people by the Department of Homeland Security for the Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, ICE. Of course, this document was classified and still is today, and when I uploaded it to archive.org, <clears throat> they quickly took down the document within less than one hour before Ben Swan could see it when I had sent him an email on the matter, but used archive.org for the file storage as email attachments. Has got everyone paranoid lately with the tormail.org child porn attacks. Also, when I had tried file hosting, sites are, to a certain degree, they were also taken down quickly without sending an email informing me as to why they would take down such an important document. So, I have decided to upload only to these two onion websites and filehost.free.com. The documents have been uploaded and the links can be found here. And it says where you can see them at planet.infowars.com. If Firehost Free Mirror is down, and then I suspect they are using a similar content to ID, the ID government document uploads. Uh, so what's he trying to reveal? It says, a guy claiming to be an FBI agent has sent me this document over TorChat, but I was able to verify this man to be a real government agent working for the FBI Cyber Crimes Division working in conjunction with ICE. This is one of the training notice or training document proposals or new on new methods that the government will use to net child porn suspects. It doesn't include much information, so I suspect that it is more of a draft document or proposal. It still reveals quite a lot within why people are here and there are mysteriously arrested for child porn, then quickly convicted and made a sex offender. Well, that's the quickest way to make the entire world hate your political enemy, just frame him for some child garbage that he never did. The two methods have been adopted and have been used for years. Of course, I am also aware of what happened to Andrew Rose in St. Louis, Missouri, with being accused of child porn when he was a senior in high school. Also, I am aware of hundreds to thousands of families with children all accused of child porn and threatened with sex offender charges with most life in prison sentences over the mere claim of downloading and sharing. 
Well, what they did to Luke Radowski, if he hadn't caught it, uh, Yahoo lets you scan your pictures before you open them. Somebody sent them to his private email, which meant he was hacked because he only gives that to his friends. They sent it to his private email, and if he'd opened it, even if he went, oh my God, and clicked it, he would have child porn on his computer because they're trying to send it out to people like that so they can frame them with it. Let me tell you what, I, I'm no saint, but if you ever hear anything, way, shape, matter, or form of me tied to anything with a child, you know damn well I was framed. This is some sick, sick garbage here. These methods are to distribute and download child pornography on EMU, CAD, BitTorrent, I love BitTorrent, and others. The use of a Trojan horse will be to plant on anti anybody's computer whom is even remotely suspected of child porn or a child's porn suspect list that they have no evidence on to get enough evidence fabricated to secure a search warrant. In other words, plant it on people's computer they don't like and then just hop on there and say that they have it. This is used in undercover child porn investigations. So they use a Trojan to basically share and download child pornography in order to secure a search warrant from the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, or Operation Flickr agents, with a joint operation between ICE and the FBI. The second method would be to stuff child pornography onto movies, music, pirated software, and other digital downloads shared on PDP networks, but in a sneaky way so that the user doesn't detect the child porn. Does anybody download music? Anybody download any movies? Anybody pirate anything ever? Well, great, you might have child porn. See you in prison. The FBI and ICE monitor the stuffed child porn downloads on P2P and get the IP addresses and secure a search warrant for a digital and physical search by seizure. I am also not aware of whether they target everybody or whether it's just certain political targets or annoyances by their recorded IP addresses using the internet service providers. So no, privacy doesn't matter. Nothing Edward Snowden said mattered, right? The government's not going to do anything with your information. No, other than go ahead and plant child porn on your computer. That's why privacy matters, guys. I, go, go and read this. Again, the name of it. Document shows FBI ICE sets up users with child porn on info, planet.infowars.com. Disgusting. Sat there since August 30th and I couldn't get rid of it. Um, a crack canards and meth myths. A neurologist corrects widely accepted misconceptions about two notorious drugs. This is Reason.com. Growing familiarity with marijuana has been accompanied by growing support for legalization because people discovered through personal experience that the government was lying about them, uh, lying to them about the drug's hazards. But it is easier to demonize less popular drugs such as crack cocaine and meth, of which I use neither, by the way which in the public mind are still linked, as marijuana once was, with addiction, madness, and violence. Any attempt to question the use of force in dealing with these drugs, therefore, must begin by separating reality from horror stories. This is where Carl Hart comes in. Hart, a neuropsychopharmacologist from Columbia, who grew up in one of Miami's rougher neighborhoods, has done bold, path-breaking research that challenges widely accepted beliefs about crack and meth. In other words, he's proving that while it would be pretty boneheaded to use either one, they are in fact not causing the mass amount of trouble that we are led to believe that they are. They are doing it for the sake of the bottom line, making money in the prison industry, which is tied to all kinds of fascist government ties. In his aspiring and fantastic new memoir, High Price, he describes both how he overcame his early disadvantages to secure a tenured position at an Ivy League university and how he became to question everything he thought he knew about drugs as he learned to think critically about the issue. Before he became a scientist, Hart believed that people who use crack generally get hooked on it and thereby lose control of their behavior. Does that happen? Of course it does. That's why it's a dumb idea to use it. However, when he looked at the data on patterns of drug use as an academic, he could plainly see that only a small minority of people who try crack become heavy users. Even at the peak of widespread use, he writes, only 10 to 20 percent of crack cocaine users become addicted. According to the National Survey on Drug and Health, just 3 percent of Americans who have tried this or reputedly irresistible and inescapable drug have, sm have smoked it in the last month. 3 percent of people that tried it. 
However, we're locking up how many millions of people? The United States has more prisoners per capita than any other country in the world. Most of it is based on drugs. 3% have used it in the last month. Only 10 to 20% of the idiots that use this get addicted, but we're locking up millions more for having it. But no, it's not about money, right? Contrary to what anti-drug ads claim, Hart observes, addiction is not an equal opportunity disorder. He notes that even rats, whose voracious consumption of cocaine in certain contrived conditions supposedly shows how powerfully addictive that drug is, tend to use it in moderation when they have other options such as food, sex, or an interesting environment to explore. Um, furthermore, it says his research with heavy crack smokers found that in contrast to the stereotypical addict who cannot help but immediately consume whatever crack is available, they frequently rejected the drug in favor of small cash payments or vouchers. Um, and he goes on to debunk much of the same thing about meth. Um, it says he's aware of the hostility he is apt to provoke by challenging the myths underlying the war on drugs. He describes an 05 meeting with journalists arranged by the Office of National Drug Control Policy where he tried to put the dangers of meth into perspective, noting that the drug is a government-approved treatment for narcolepsy and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. He cited his own research finding that meth has the same effects as a more similar ADHD drug, Adderall, which is nearly identical in its chemical structure. See, there you go again. Ye you get a lot of money tied up in these ADD drugs that people don't need. And Adderall, which hundreds of thousands, I would say maybe over a million people are on, I wouldn't be surprised if it was much higher than that, are taking something more dangerous and more synthetic. So there you go. Um, the answer in that regard might be to, uh, to streamline the way that meth is made in its consistency. But you can't do that because, you know, you, you, you've got to be tied to these pharmaceuticals so that your liver jumps out of your body. Guys, I've gone a little long, so the last thing I'm going to get to, this was in the running for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, which is coming up in about a week and a half or so, but <clears throat> no, it didn't win. But it's definitely one of the ones that almost made it. ADHD drugs that might soon be used to treat binge eating. How stupid can you be? Let me show you an exercise that prevents you from getting fat. Push yourself from the table. Do not lift the fork to your mouth. I know, I've always been a little pudgy. I'm kind of fat now, but you know what? You're going to take a drug to lose... Listen to this, this is stupidity. Pharmaceutical group Shire PLC said, uh, Levance, it's an... an it's amphetamine-based drug it prescribed to U.S. adults to control ADHD has also been successful in treating the newly recognized binge eating disorder in a trial. There is no binge eating disorder. You either have the willpower not to eat or you don't. Now, some people, you know, have uh, uh, some kind of medical issue, and I'm not talking to them. And this wasn't going to help them either. Shares in the London-listed firm rose to an all-time high on Tuesday after it said the drug was superior to placebo in reducing the number of binge-eating days per week in two randomized late-stage trials. I can tell you where this is going. First of all, <clears throat> it's going to uh, create more health problems than overeating does. Um, and it's going to be all about, oh, you know, covering for people that don't have enough willpower to lose weight. Now they can do it with a simple drug. And again, liver jumps out of the body. It said it would uh, submit an application to the U.S. Drugs Regulator, the FDA. Oh, we all know how wonderful they are. We know they don't test our food from poisonous Fukushima. Uh, the FDA is seeking approval of the drug uh, for bed. <laughs> Binge eating disorder. No willpower disorder. After the results of the test, which are completed earlier than expected. Uh, boneheaded, boneheaded, boneheaded. This is for people with absolutely no willpower who just want to take some miracle drug to lose weight. And who cares if it's worse for you than being 25 pounds overweight? Who cares if it could be worse for your heart? At least you'll be thin, and that's what Rihanna said you had to be to be cool. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing out. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on uh, the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Uh, make sure you tell Google that they can go to hell for messing up the entire way that you post a video, which is why you're watching the low def on my site and the high def on the media speaks. 
because Google has ruined our account by linking into YouTube and destroying everything like Google always does. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night. God bless. And please donate if you can, though, because each penny you give me goes to a better show. God bless.